There are four tracks, uh, almost 500 feet of track. Lots of trestles, lots of tree branches that supports, and our cedar mountains that we sculpt here on site, along with 12 pollinators that we have installed here. So the cedar mountains are these sculpted objects behind me. That's sort of our backdrop. It's a lot of support. We park the trains in there at night in their uh, tunnels so that they stay dry and away from uh, the critters. The track is made of treated lumber, and we cut that and design each track for a, a, each garden that we go to. So these, this is a very unique display designed exactly for this spot and for this garden, which is super cool. And then we, we build these custom bridges, which are made of what we call ditch willow, which is sort of sustainably harvested in ditches near water and things like that. And it grows really straight, so we're able to build these engineered correctly bridges. It can be difficult, you know, you kind of have to find the perfect piece out in the forest. So a, a certain curve of a branch or, or the way the bark is curved or a certain texture that you need to find to mimic fur or, or, or the brick on a building. So it does present its challenges, but it is fun to kind of find that material and present that to your audience and say, oh wait, that is all natural material. That's really cool. It can be very difficult because sometimes you don't find the right piece. And so you have to uh, sort of figure it out with what you have. It's difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Cranes move things. They're freight. They move people. They move things. But in a lot of ways, pollinators are exactly the same. They're just moving pollen from flower to flower. They're helping plants reproduce. A little bit more of a poetic connection, um, but you know, we love the trains, we love the pollinators, and we think this will be a nice kind of marriage for people. So on the Pollinator Express, you get the pollinators that are not necessarily your typical ones, so your bumblebees, your butterflies, and things of that nature. You have your ruffled lemur, you have your milkweed beetle, you have a gecko, a yucca moth, all kinds of really interesting um, insects and animals that are pollinators that people don't always think are pollinators. So it's a very good learning experience to come and check out those uh, pollinators they may not, may not know of. So they are usually a, a core of foam or some sort of wood that we've gathered and then they are all sculpted by hand. Our team of artists does that at our workshop. And then they are all covered in a slew of botanic materials, everything from barks to seed pods to vines, anything you can find out in the forest. I think when a lot of people think of pollinators, they think of bees, you know, they probably think of butterflies, but there are actually a lot more different types of animals and insects that pollinate plants. And many have developed some really unique connections with the plants that they pollinate. For example, behind me, uh, we have a milkweed beetle with milkweed, which is actually a plant and maybe a pollinator that folks around this area might be familiar with. But there are some really odd ones too, you know, from around the world. We have a honey creeper bird uh, with a lobelia flower, which is native to Hawaii. You know, we've got a gecko that's in the exhibit. There's a fruit bat. Um, there are all these really interesting types of, uh, of animals and insects that do the same job, but don't necessarily get all the credit like butterflies and bees do. Applied imagination mainly creates botanical sculptures and garden railway displays. I studied sculpture at Northern Kentucky University and uh, came on right out of school and learned a lot of it on, on site here. We're in Alexandria, Kentucky. It's about 12 miles south of Cincinnati, but we travel everywhere from Morris Arboretum in Philadelphia to Tucson Botanical Garden in Arizona. The company was sort of started in 1991 by Paul Bussey. He was the mastermind of all this and was uh, really into trains and wanted to make his own buildings to put uh, in his displays. And it all came from just a love for trains and a love for model making. Mm -hmm.